Hello everyone, in this video we're going to talk about the stresses in power screws. So the power screw is under load and then we're going to see what the stresses does that load create for us. We're going to divide it into two categories, the stresses in the body of the power screw and the stresses on the threads. So the body of the power screw is this cylinder with a root diameter of dr. We are, it's going to be under torsion during this and it can fail to do that torsion or it can fail throughout the compression so it's going to be under compressive uh, force and these are the two stresses that we're going to look into it the torsion is going to create a shear stress for us and the compression stress is going to create a normal uh, stress for us and in the thread we're going to have the bending so at the root of the thread we're going to have the shear and the shear is maximum in the middle of the cross section and also the bearing stresses so basically the compression but on the thread itself let's look at the values of these stresses so for the torsion we know the equation for the torsion is tcj c for us or the maximum radius that is applying is dr over 2 is the root diameter so basically we are looking at these edges on the outer edges, that's the dr over 2. And j is pi over 32 dr to the fourth. We can simplify it into this equation. For the compression, simply it's f over a. And then if you want to observe the sign as well, there should be a negative here. And a is pi over 4 d squared. So at the end we get this equation. So these are the two stress values for the stresses that the body of the screw experience. If we move to the thread, here we're going to start with the bending. So if you have a force here, there is a bending arm or the moment arm. And if the whole thing is pi over 2, the moment arm is pi over, sorry, p over 4. And then we're talking about the stresses at the root and this, in this location. So here we are looking at the 2D version of uh, our power screw, but in reality it's 3D and the thread goes completely around. So the, the area that is acting looks like this cylinder. And we are talking about this area that the stresses are acting. So we can open up this circumferential area around the power screw and it would form a rectangle and the circumference would be pi dr and the height would be p over 2 half of pitch now if you want to form our equation that would be mc over i we need to find i the i of this rectangle is the base bh cubed for us the base is pi dr here we have an additional term of nt which is the number of engaged thread that we will talk about it later on depending on how many threads are engaged not all the forces are carried by one thread there are multiple threads involved in the in the stress distribution and h is pi, p over 2 cubed so if you're plugging all the values here and simplify that's the equation that we have f is the clamping force or the force that we are lifting p is the pitch and t is the number of threads involved dr is the root diameter and then of course pi the second stress we're going to look at is the shear so we have a force here there would be a reaction here that would be f so this part is going to be under shear stress and again this is a 2d version in 3d version the thread goes around it so the same cross section that we talked about uh, bending is true here the shear stress is zero at the top of the cross section so if you have a cross section here and then we have shear stress is and I draw the shear stress graph here is maximum in the middle of the cross section and is zero on the top of the cross section and the equation that we have for it is VQIT if you want to find the exact value of the shear stress if plugging the values for a rectangle we know is simply 3V2 over 2A and then we have the A it's just the area of a rectangle so and then we just add nt for the number of threads involved because not one thread carries all the load 
after plugging the values that's the equation that we get for the shear stress on the thread and the last one is the bearing stress bearing stress or contact stress or compression we're talking about the compression of the the thread itself not the body and then this one goes around so if i want to draw the thread that's the geometry that i'm gonna have and there would be stresses on these normal stresses we call it bearing stress here because of the the contact the equation is the same f over a the area of one thread i'll take the mean diameter i have dr over and d so i use dm so somewhere in the middle and for all the engaged thread the only difference is that we multiply by nt that we'll talk about it so plugging all the values here I get my last equation. This is the stresses on the thread, the bearing stresses on the thread itself. So I got three stresses for the thread and two stresses for the body. Now let's look at all the stresses in one place. We need to consider an element here differential element to look at our stresses and that's the critical location just at the root of the thread so you're talking about this uh, element here if i show it here if i bring it up here i have sigma x which is the bending stress on the thread x like at the edge i have sigma y which is the compression of the body i have the shear stresses due to torsion so I have these three components of the stress. We have five stresses. Two of them are not present in that element. One is the shear stress on the thread, which is maximum in the middle, and zero at the top. So it's zero. We don't consider it. And then the other one is the stress on uh, the thread, the compression stress or the bearing stress, which is acting on this thread. So we didn't include in that equation. So here, if I want to write all our stress state, which means that six no six stresses in total three normal stresses and three shear stresses with their corresponding equation that's the form that we have but how can we calculate and determine factor of safety or do any stress analysis we need to find an effective stress and the best way is to use one misses this is the general equation of one misses we put all our stresses into one misses equation the one misses is going to give us one value and then we can compare that value with the yield and then we can find factor of safety or we can evaluate whether there would be any failure or not the alternative is to use more circle and find the principal stresses which is a longer approach and it's really not necessary when one misses is, is very effective and, and accurate so we can plug in all the values into our one misses equation to get uh, the effective stress and from that effective stress we can find whether there would be failure or not because these stresses work collaboratively toward the failure couple of important points is that in power screws the power screw is in compression so it's going to have some shortening but the engaging knot is, ten is in tension so we have compression and tension of the knot and the power screw therefore the threads are not going to carry the load equally so if you have multiple threads the first thread is going to carry the most load and then the load is going to decrease as you go on so the first thread would be 38 25 25 and 18% and then goes uh, lower than that to a point that the seventh thread experimentally has been shown that it doesn't carry much load we are interested in the the most critical or the weakest point and the weakest point would be the first thread that carries 38 percent of the load so we really don't need to analyze all the threads but only the the thread that carries the largest load so the approach that we are going to have is that we are going to use 0.38 of the load and then we use nt1 because we don't need to deal with all the threads that are involved just we're analyzing for the first thread. The first thread doesn't take all the load, but takes the majority of the load, the 38% of the load. And that's what we are gonna do in case. So remember, change the force to 3, 38% and then use NT equals one for the analysis.